Every semester I teach economics, I find a Max in my class. Max is a bright and enthusiastic student with a passion for economics. But there's one pesky little problem that clouds Max's academic sky, math. Oh boy, does Max hate math. And I have a feeling there are a lot of Maxes watching my videos. So today we're gonna talk about the options that you have if you are interested in economics, if you love economics, but you hate math. I'm gonna focus mostly on college students, but if you're a high school student or if you're long past your college days, don't worry, you're gonna find tips in here that are gonna help you too. For this first tip, we really need to understand why you hate math. Maybe you think math classes are like a snow jacket on a sunny summer day. The material is bulky, it feels heavy and unnecessary, and it might even cause you to sweat with frustration. You can do math, but it's just unpleasant. Well, economics is like the first snow day of winter. You get to have fun learning interesting concepts, and you'll see that math gives you nice warmth against the cold challenges of economics, and you might even realize that there's a reason why we learn math. You could go from hating math to appreciating it. But maybe that's not you. Maybe you hate math because you think you can't do it. Maybe you're Barbara in Antarctica. Barbara was a radio operator at the South Pole, which is weird because she studied Russian in college. She hated math, flunked it all through high school, and she thought she had no skill for it. But after working in South Pole on that radio and being in the military, she thought it would be really nice to become an engineer. But engineers need to understand a lot of math. Even though she had a rough history with math, she realized that there were simple techniques that she could use to overcome her inabilities. And then she eventually went on and got a PhD in engineering. Barbara shows that it's possible to learn math. She even wrote a whole book on the strategy she used. And I'm sure if this is your problem, you can learn the math that you need to get through an economics course. I'm not gonna lie right now, even though I'm in Antarctica, it feels like it is exactly the middle of summer and I am roasting in this. So let's do a quick change. Now, the next thing you can do is appreciate the degree of degrees. Let me give you a tiny geography lesson. The university that I teach at is about two hours north of the university where I did my undergraduate. And right in between those two universities is a third university. Now, in my undergraduate university, they had a very intensive math requirement. Where I teach right now, we do require math, but it's not nearly as intense as where I went to it for my undergraduate. And that university in the middle, when I was a student, they basically had no math requirement. Programs have varying levels of math intensity. Even within a program, you can see a lot of differences. For example, at the university where I teach at, we offer a couple of different paths based on how math intensive you want to make it. So before you get too scared about the math in your economics program, you should actually check and see what that math requirement is. And if you're deciding between two colleges right now and you're trying to figure out where to go, then checking that math requirement is gonna be a nice way to decide between the colleges. I will say I do think that math part is important for an education in economics. It's not essential to go super deep. So you don't want a program that totally avoids math, but you don't necessarily need one that's getting in the weeds of the math. You wanna find that nice balance and then you wanna remember Barbara and know that you can do the math, even if it's difficult for you right now. If you're still worried about the math in your economics classes, then you can take what I call the quarterback sprinter strategy. This strategy is useful for students who wanna gain a deeper understanding of economics, but they don't wanna to take too much of a hit in their academics. You see, when I was in high school, I ran track and our track team was huge. I mean, there were 200 athletes out there running, throwing, doing everything. And because you have 200 athletes out there, that spectrum is so wide. You have some who are some of the best in the state, if not the country, and then you have others who, I don't know why they thought it was a good idea for them to join track. But in the middle of those two, you have the football players. Now I'm talking about American football. And in American football, the person who throws the football is the quarterback. And since 
that person's main goal is to throw the football and get really good passes, they tend to focus on that arm strength, making sure that they're accurate, doing whatever they need to to pass that ball. But every once in a while, they need to run. So you would see every once in a while, quarterbacks coming out and joining the track team and they would train with the sprinters. Now they weren't trying to be the best out there. That wasn't their specialty, but they were still trying because they wanted to get some of that leg strength through cross training. I have students who have found that their strengths are in other majors outside of economics, yet they acted like these quarterbacks and decided to take some economics classes as cross training. In fact, Economics will enhance any major that you choose, and it doesn't take too much to get a big boost. You just have to take a few classes. And if you're majoring in something else, that means you can pick and choose the classes that best suit your needs. And your needs might be classes that are heavy on insight, but light on math. And you can find those in any economics department. This last tip is not just for students, it's for anyone interested in gaining a deeper knowledge of economics. And you can do this without paying a dollar in tuition. You just need to learn some lessons from polyglots. I took a lot of foreign language classes in college. I took three semesters of Japanese. Thank you, Shimasta, Kedo. Zenzen Wakarimasen. Three semesters of French. Je te je parle un petit peu. And two semesters of Portuguese. Eu falo um pouco de Portuguese, mas eu preciso de praticar mais. All college language programs are structured the same way. The 100 and 200 level classes are about teaching you how to speak the language, getting you introduced to all those concepts. And then the more advanced classes usually dive into the history and the literature. But the history and the literature isn't necessarily the skill that you want when you're learning a language. You just want to be able to learn how to speak that language. And most people can learn how to speak a foreign language without taking college classes. You can do that through self-study. In fact, the language that I speak the best is one that I never even took a single college class for, and that's Haitian Creole. Most people don't need a deep understanding of the mathematical models that economists use. What they really need to do is understand what is opportunity cost, what is adverse selection, what are these terms and how can I think about them and apply them in my life. You can learn those things the same way that polyglots learn how to speak another language. Just regularly immerse yourself in non-technical explanations of economics. You can do that by reading some of these popular economics books written by very competent economists who are explaining these things in a way that's really easy to understand. You can do that by watching YouTube videos. Of course, you need to make sure that you're watching good YouTube videos, and I try to post those every once in a while. You can also read newsletters about economics. I have one, I can put a link to that in the description below, right underneath that subscribe button. There are a lot of resources that you can use to expose yourself to economics without having to worry about the math. The thing is, even once you've taken your classes and read your books, there are still a few things that you need to do to stand out in economics. That's why you need to watch this video. It will give you plenty of ideas for how you can really stand out from the crowd.